here to worship on Palm Sunday. Let's welcome the King of Kings into this place today. Yeah. 
We call upon the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need you, God. This whole world needs you today, God. Thank you, God, that we are the light of this world for you, God. I want to be your hands and your feet, God, in this last end time hour, God. In every tongue, every nation, in every tongue, lift high the name of the Holy One. Lift high the name of the Holy One. Every race, creed, and tribe, every race, creed, and tribe, lift up the name of the Lord Most High. Lift up the name of the Lord Most High. Sing your songs of deliverance and your dance of victory. You are free. Songs of deliverance and your dead to victory. You are free. Hey. All God's people everywhere. Hands up in the air as you worship His great name. A 
God. Amen. There's nobody like him. Folks, you can look everywhere. You can look, amen, in the palaces of this world, and you're not going to find any glory to match the glory of our Lord. Hallelujah. He is awesome. He is mighty. He is worthy to receive all of our praise. Amen. Let's go to him in prayer today. Amen. Many needs. Lord Jesus, God, we love you today. Lord, I thank you for, God, Lord, thank you for coming, Lord. Thank you for coming and saving us, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to reach down and touch, Lord, these needs. Every name, God, Brother Morris, Lord, Brother and Sister Alexander, Brother Smith, Brother Birdwell, Sister Sherwood, Sister Dubos, Kennedy, Lord, needs a miracle, God, and you can do it, Lord. God, we ask you to reach down and touch Wyatt and Jessica Davis, Lord, and her family. Lord. God, minister healing, God, into each and every situation, Lord. Comfort where comfort is needed, Lord. An answer where the answer is needed. Victory, Lord, where victory is needed. Hallelujah, Lord, you're able to do abundantly, God. the healer. Amen. He's still the miracle worker. Hallelujah. He's still the God. Amen. Who raises the dead. Who opens the blinded eyes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for touching, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, amen. Well, welcome to the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita on Palm Sunday. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Brother Colton and uh, Brother Gabriel, if y'all will come up. And uh, so many of you may know we have a program that you can be seated. Amen. Uh, we have uh, the discipleship program that we're running in this church is called Elements. Amen. It consists of four modules. Each module is six lessons long. And uh, uh, for a total of, what is that, 24, 24 classes. And uh, it's a very good program. And uh, so today we would like to recognize the folks who have been going through uh, our, mo our, our uh, elements classes today uh, with their certificates. And also would like to take the opportunity to invite you. If you're, uh, if you're here, you're new to Pentecost or new to this church or just want to, you know, uh, get back to the basics, this class is for you. Amen. So if you'll get with me after church, I would love to introduce you to the elements class. Amen. And uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and recognize our graduates. So we'll start off with Brother Gabriel. Brother Gabriel's teaching a class. And so uh, Monica Rodriguez, if you could come up. Yes. Sister Monica has completed module one. Brother and Sister McDaniel. Amen. Richard and Patty, it's so good to have them a part of this class. They've completed module one and module two. Okay, Sister Monica, stay up here if you don't mind. Yeah. So this is a great program while they're coming. You know, this is a class where, you know, the students aren't just sitting listening to these gentlemen uh, share their, their wisdom, which they are sharing their wisdom, but it's also very interactive. So when people come to class, you, you find yourself sitting at a table with workbooks and you go through the scripture and it's a very interactive discussion, which makes it very interesting. Amen. Congratulations, brother and sister McDaniel. Amen. Brother William Butler. Here it comes. Module one. And Sister Naomi LeBron. Teresita Garber, so she's in class today, but she completed module two. Uh, brother and sister Jones have completed module two and module three. And brother Donovan Morlock. Sister Noemi Ram Ramos, sorry, completed module three and module four. Now this last group, I should have had them some graduate hats because they graduated, folks. They've completed all four modules. Amen. Joseph and Christy Schmidt, they're not here this morning. Amen. Sister Gwen Stapleton.
Sister Linda Williams. Amen. And of course, Brother Colton and Brother Gabriel help us teach. Amen. Let's give all these a hand. We're so thankful. If you're interested in in getting in this class, just see our assistant pastor, Brother Jeffrey, and he'll make sure that you get signed up for that. I am here today to promote next weekend. Everyone say Easter. They had a great outreach yesterday. And Brother Woods, if you could go ahead and put up the Easter graphic. This will be like, I think, the third or fourth year that we have started doing flowering the cross. And it's just a really neat time for everybody just and for our community we're going to put a cross out in in the front lawn on good friday early in the morning it will be available for you to bring your flowers and just put your flowers all in the cross and by the end of by the time sunday's here it's going to be a beautiful cross and it's just a great thing an outreach for the community to stop by you'll see people bringing their flowers and stopping and getting pictures so tell your neighbors about it because this is for our community this is an outreach for our community so be sure to bring your flowers good friday and i'm i'm saying it'll be ready early in the morning because brother Brock will have it ready probably Thursday night. So Friday morning, it will be available for you. Easter, make sure you bring your friends, your neighbors, your cousins, your nieces, anyone that does not have a church, that, that's not attending a truth church, invite them to church here to worship with us um, in Atascacita. There will be a kids service for our children. And following the service, after we have a move of God, we will have a Uh, Easter egg hunt for the children. God bless you. Amen. So today is also Mission Sunday, the first Sunday of every month. We invite everybody to wear their Reach Mission shirt, and we we remember our commitment to support the cause of uh, spreading the gospel around the world, not only in this country, but around the world. And we have a video presentation to you today from Brother Wicket, uh, who, uh, if you if you remember a few years ago, uh, was one of our guests at our at our uh, Reach Missions Conference. So, please uh, enjoy this report from uh, from Brother Wicket, missionary Troy Wicket here in Fiji. We're excited about what God is doing, and and, and such a beautiful people, and their worship and their praise and their exuberance. And one of the unique things about them is when they take up their offering, they'll use sheets or whatever is at hand. And uh, when they come and they give with cheerfully and exuberance, and the sheets work well for them because sometimes it's not just coins and cash, but there's times when they don't have coins and cash and you'll see coats or you'll see shoes or watches or whatever they may have that is of value to them. And they use the sheets because the sheets are bigger and they can, and they can take them. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, there's an opportunity to be a blessing. And in Fiji, they are cheerful givers. They come rejoicing, they leave rejoicing. Amen, we're excited about what God is doing in Fiji. Praise God. Well, I don't know, maybe we need to get a sheet instead of the bucket. Amen, and show our faith in what God can do. Amen, isn't it good to be a part of what God is doing on the island of Fiji? Your mission's giving. Amen, your commitment amen is contributing to revival in that place amen let's receive our sunday morning tithes our offerings and our mission commitment if you'll please stand lord jesus thank you god lord i thank you lord that we're not just part of a church here in atascacita lord but we're part of a global church lord god the body of christ that reaches around the world and lord we ask you god to bless your church bless your church here in atascacita bless your church in texas in america and around the world in jesus name amen you may bring your offering
can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broke. Strength where I've been weak. Forever He will reign. Oh, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. me from the rain. Oh, my God is awesome. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm Heals me when I grow. Strength where I've been weak. Strength where I've been weak. Forever he will reign. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He's awesome. claim it this morning my God is awesome today I am forgiven his grace is why I am my praise is holy my God is awesome say it with me my God is awesome he's awesome
Dios de buen ánimo. in the house of the Lord. Amen on Palm Sunday. I'm looking forward to next Sunday morning. There's nothing quite like resurrection morning. Amen. When you think about all that the Lord has done for you and laying down his life shedding precious, perfect blood to break the curse and set at liberty his people. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And don't forget between Friday and Sunday, bring flowers, bring your family, and flower that cross. Amen. And the reason we do that is because of what the Lord has done for us. He took something that was so ugly. Now, y'all just got to get this in your mind and see this. That cross was their electric chair. That was their death row. That was where they put to death the criminals. He took something that was so dreaded and so ugly and hated and despised. And by giving his life, laying it down, shedding his blood, that cross turned into the most beautiful thing that we could ever look upon. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He transformed it. And that tells me there's hope for every one of us because he can take something that you may say that is so ugly when you look at your past and your sins and your failures. And he transforms it and makes it something beautiful. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, everybody in here is precious and beautiful because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you come, you might bring you a step stool or a little bit ladder or something, you know, because it's you may want your flowers to be right up there on the high. Amen. Up at the top. But I promise you it'll bless you. It will bless your family. If you will come and just make it a special moment and beautify that cross and then get your family and thank the Lord for what he's done 
in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. And again, invite somebody, bring somebody with you next Sunday morning. And we're going to have a time in the presence of the Lord. If you'll turn with me, I am going to read from two different chapters. I'm going to begin in Matthew chapter 21, verse 6. And then we're going to go to the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 37. I will begin in Matthew chapter 21, verse 6. Before I begin, would you high-five somebody if you don't mind? Or you might give them the fist bump. It don't matter to me. But we're glad you're here. We welcome you. It is a joy to worship the Lord with you. Amen. It is a joy. I love coming together with God's wonderful people. Amen. From every nation, I love to worship God with his people. Amen. Matthew 21, verse 6. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had commanded them. And he brought the donkey and the coat, and he put on them their clothes, and they set him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strolled them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed, they cried saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now if you will turn with me to Luke chapter 19, the gospel according to Luke chapter 19, reading verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Everybody say with a loud voice. Amen. That can be a little bit annoying. With a loud voice. For all the mighty works that they had seen. And they were saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. In other words, rebuke all of these people. And he answered and said unto them, I will tell you, if these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. I want to talk to you on this subject this morning. Chosen replacements. Uh, chosen replacements. Let's lift our hands. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We exalt you. On this great special day we lift our hearts we lift our hands we lift our voices and we've come to praise you and we thank you for your word and everybody say in Jesus name and let's praise him one more time before you're seated come on make a loud noise shout 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 unto the Lord. Praise. Glory unto God, unto the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Today is a day Christianity celebrates as Palm Sunday. And the reason this is called Palm Sunday is when the Jews heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem to enter into that temple. John 12 and 13 says, this is the gospel according to John, they took branches of palm trees. They took branches of palm trees and they went forth to meet him and they cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The palm branches, they were used as an illustration of celebration. It was not uncommon to see the waving of the palm branches and the crowds of people in celebrations as they would celebrate, as they would praise. The palm branches, they were regarded in their day as tokens of joy and triumph. Amen. Come back tonight, y'all. Amen. Come back tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to have a great time tonight. That they were tokens of joy and triumph and were customarily used, as I have said, in festive occasions. They were considered symbols of victory and triumph. They have been used throughout the years in biblical history to celebrate their coming out of Egypt. Hallelujah. When they would celebrate coming out of Egyptian captivity, they would celebrate coming out from among those that would abuse them and that would beat them down and tear them down and try to keep them in conditions of weakness. Hallelujah. It's the most beautiful stories of the Word of God. When you read that and you read about the purposes of why they wanted to tear down the children of Israel, they, they wanted to beat them down and keep them in defeat feelings and keep them depressed and discouraged and heavy with all of the burdens of the things they was carrying continually. But in the midst of it, God was making them stronger and stronger and stronger. And the ladies were having more babies than all the other ladies. They were multiplying by the miraculous hand and power of God. Amen, 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 amen. Somebody this morning, you need to say, I've got a God that is awesome. Come on, hallelujah, I've got a God that is awesome. And when he said all things work together for the good, we don't understand the depth of what he's saying. But I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This world is not going to beat me down. Oh, I'm going to get stronger in God. I'm going to get greater and more powerful than I have ever been before by that abuse that Satan is throwing against. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The palm branches were used in King David's time. There's so much prophecy Amen. In the Psalms and King David and that the kingdom of David and so much of the connection that, that goes on. I'll be back in that tonight. Hallelujah. But there's a great connection between the Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem and these prophetic words that I'm going to read in Psalms, the 24th chapter. Palm branches were used to honor royalty. Hallelujah. 
They were used to honor royalty. And I'm going to read now in Psalms 24 and 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? He's the Lord of hosts. He's the King of glory. He's the Lord uh, that governs uh, the mighty angels. Uh, come on, somebody. Those angels that encamp around about you and me. He's the Lord uh, that governs all of that. He's the Lord mighty in battle. There's not a demon, a devil, or anything else. Uh, principalities or powers. Uh, come on, somebody that can break in because God is mighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, and throughout the ancient times, the conquerors and kings, they were welcomed with the palm branches as they would enter in. And then those palm branches would be strewn before them as people were waving them in the air. In the ancient times when a king rode into a city, it was an amazing thing. You could expect to see them riding victoriously upon a war horse, a stallion, and bringing with them their show of power and wealth with a long procession of their treasures, riding a war horse, followed by other kings in chains, being captive, and princes in chains. As the leading king would have the proof following where the kingdoms have been conquered. Oh, come on. <laughs> Except our king works different. Here's how you overcome it. You humble yourself. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. He wasn't only riding a donkey. He was on the coat. He was on the weaker one. But, friend, I'm going to tell you right now, this king, mm -mm -mm -mm. this humble king, this gentle king, that come riding in on that donkey. Aren't you glad this morning to know who the true conqueror is? Out of all the kings of the world, out of all of everyone that ever reigned in power and strength with their armies, the conqueror king, the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord whose armies are the angelic host. Luke 10 and 17, after Jesus had sent out the 70, he sent out Ones that he had talked to about authority that they had in the name of Jesus. Authority to cast out devils. Authority to lay hands upon the sick. And, and as he sent them out, the Bible tells us in verse 17, And the seventy returned with joy. They were excited. They were rejoicing. And they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Oh, Ooh, if that don't make you want to shout right now. Even the devils 
trembled when we called the name of Jesus. Y'all have no idea what goes on when people start saying Jesus and they start crying out Jesus and they start shouting Jesus and they get their old pride off of their old hidey mountains and get humbled before God and say Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm telling you right now, there is an authority and power that is given in the name of Jesus. Jesus said unto them, behold, Satan, I seen as lightning fall from heaven. Oh, he's talking about victories. Things beyond what they had ever seen. In other words, he's saying, I am the conquering king. And the prophecy of Jesus' triumph will entry into Jerusalem. It tells of the mighty victory that was won. Let's read the prophecy of this triumphant entry on this day. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. This was back in the Old Testament. The prophets prophesying. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. For behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding upon a donkey, upon a colt, the fowl of a donkey. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he will speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea. And from river even to the ends of the earth. Ooh, somebody say we fall in there. We, we fall up inside that. Hallelujah, the victory and the dominion. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And everybody in here that stresses out and that worries about everything that is to come, let me just give you a little bit of peace. Revelation 19, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Huh. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and was called true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes are as a flame of fire, and on his head are many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called. Oh, come on, somebody. When you say Jesus... When you say Jesus, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last, and every word is in it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. When you say Jesus, in verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, and they were clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Do y'all know who's in those armies? You are. There's a parade coming this world. I don't want to see. I'm going to tell you right now. Preacher, what are you waiting for? You know what I'm waiting for? The rapture. Not the second coming. The rapture is when he calls his church out of here. <laughs> that day, friend, when he's coming on that white horse, you and I are behind him on our horses. <laughs> Woo! Fine linen, white and clean. <laughs> because of the blood. Because of the blood. Because of the blood. <laughs> Oh, the accuser of the brethren. Satan is overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. Oh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. The blood has already been shed once and for all. But you got to keep your testimony alive every day. Keep it alive. Keep it alive. He's overcome by the blood of the lamb and your testimony. Your testimony is, is alive. It's still alive. He's still alive. Hallelujah. I'm still victorious. I'm still an overcomer by the blood. Verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he will smite the nations and rule them with a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God and on his vesture and on his thigh is the name written, the king of kings and the lord of lords. Woo! Come on, anybody got any shout in them this morning? This is Palm Sunday. Hallelujah, this is Palm Sunday. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. The King, the King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lift up your gates. You have a last doors and let the King of glory come in. Mm. Hallelujah. In my younger days, let me ask you something. Did anybody come and, and, and did you, anybody come with their palm of praise this morning? This is just a symbol right here. Hallelujah. Those hands, those arms, those voices. Did anybody come today? Hallelujah. Did you just come and it's another tradition religion? Come on. Come on. Did you come because it's another day of traditional religion? Or did you come today because you've come to welcome the king? Come on, Brother Gary. Hey man, we got palms up here. Y'all can see we got extras on both sides. There's some of you brave enough souls. First come, whoever first come, first serve. But anybody want to get you a palm and start helping me out and worshiping today? Well, come on at it. Hallelujah. We're not here to look pretty. We're not here to look like a traditional religion. We are here to welcome the King of kings and the Lord of lords and to rejoice at who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, grab you some pride busters. Come on, grab you some pride busters. Grab you some pride busters. Oh, I'm not here to look pretty. I'm not here on display. I'm not here because I'm a part of a museum. I'm here because I'm a part of those that are broken and hurting and that need mercy. I needed mercy. I gotta have mercy. I gotta have help. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what it all represents, what it's all about. Welcoming the king. Lift up your gates. Lift up your gates. Let the king come in. Let the king of glory, mighty in battle. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Come on, somebody, will you shout? Shout, shout, lift up your voice. Let your voice out. Let it go, let it go, let it go. He gave you a loud voice to shout for him, to shout, to cry aloud unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Son, that a blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In my younger days, 
I'll never forget. There are memories you'll never forget. And in my younger days, people will go crazy praising a man that sang Jailhouse Rock. And they called him the king. They made a movie recently. Is it called The King? The movie? Elvis. I'm preaching about the one that made the gel rock. (laughs) He didn't write a song about it. He made the gel rock. Acts 16, 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately everybody's doors were open. And everybody's chains. Come on. This is the king I'm preaching about this morning. I'm preaching about the king that says there's not a demon, there's not a devil, there's not a chain that can keep you. Oh, I've got the highest law. I am the highest law. Everything, everything bows to that word. Everything. Hallelujah. I'm preaching about the king of glory. The king of glory. The king of glory. He don't have a story about old Dean. He don't have a story. (laughs) That king laid down his life, placed in the tomb. But then there was a jailhouse rock. (laughs) And it came alive again with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Satan, you don't have those keys, I do. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to some people right now. Amen. The Lord, Terry's is coming. And we go ahead and go by the way of the grave. When I breathe my last breath, that second, friend, you're going to rise up in a victory. Oh, come on, somebody. Yay. Death don't got me. Hell can't have me. Do we have any crazy praisers in here? Come on, do we have any crazy praisers in here? I'm not talking about Elvis. And I seen it with my own eyes as people wept and cried because of Elvis. I'll never forget being down the street as a young boy. And I was over there playing with my friends. All of a sudden his mama starts crying. It's like, what in the world's wrong with her? The king died. No. The king died. Not my king. (laughs) I don't know who your king is, but my king didn't die. (laughs) Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. If they can get crazy for that world's kings, how much? 
much more can we the people break the traditions of the Pharisees? Break all of the pretty stuff and say I'm here for another reason. I'm here to worship the King of Kings. I'm here for another reason. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Preacher, can you bring that home a little bit more for us? Yes. Will you receive the Holy Ghost? Will you receive the Holy Spirit? Lift up your gates, ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Come on, we're too worried about what somebody's going to think. If I go to speaking in tongues like that Bible said, and dancing and shouting, acting like I've gone crazy. That's what happens to people that are filled with the king of glory. When he comes in, he breaks every chain. He heals you and sets you free. Come on. I don't want tradition. I don't want another day of religion. I want a day of the Holy Ghost. People receiving the king. I don't know what everybody else is doing all around the world on Palm Sunday, but I know what we're doing. I know what I'm doing. Give me a palm. Because I'm going to make some noise. Give me a poem. Because I'm going to be one of those crazy praisers that makes the religious people mad. Give me a poem. I've come to welcome the King of glory, mighty in battle. Oh. I'm going to read it again. Psalms 24 and 7. Lift up your heads. Oh, your gates. Be you lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? He's the Lord. Strong and mighty. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, oh, your gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? He's the Lord of the angels. He's the Lord of the armies of God. He's the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Come on. This is the pride busting day. This is the day where your flesh gets out of the way. This is the day where you say, I don't care what I look like. And I don't care who I bother by my shouting. I want the king of glory to come in. Come on. We need the king that is mighty in battle. Come on, is anybody tired of the perversion coming into your house, into your children, and all of the junk Satan is pumping down to them? Come into this place, King of glory, mighty in battle. 
If you have never received the Holy Ghost, as the Bible says, not as a bunch of men want to say, I'm telling you, as the Bible says, be backed up by Scripture, like the book of Acts. You got to go to the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John told of the life, the death, the burial of Jesus Christ and resurrection. The book of Acts was when he ascended unto heaven. Immediately, what did they begin preaching? What was the message? The ones that had the keys to the kingdom. If you have not received the Holy Ghost, welcome him today. Say, come in. Lift up your gates. Open the doors, the everlasting doors. And let the king of glory come in. I'm asking you today, not by me, but by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, do what many people will not do because they refuse. They refuse to let the king of glory come in and receive the Holy Ghost. John 20 and 22, Jesus, when he had said this, he breathed upon them and he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Receive it. Receive it. That's the King of Kings. It's the Lord of glory. It's the true conquering King. Let him rule in your life. Let him rule in your spirit. Let him rule in your mind. Let him rule. Let him be the one in authority over anything that goes on in your body. Let him be the one in total authority in total reign and rule. The king, the king, mighty in battle over all cancers, over all curses, over all diseases, over all blood issues. He is still the king over all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let the king of glory come in. Apostle Paul says it like this in Romans 8 and 37. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him. We are more than conquerors through him. A conqueror is one that fights and wins. Those that are more than conquerors are the one that just receives the blessing from the one that fought and won. You didn't fight. You didn't have to go to the Calvary. You didn't have to shed your blood. You didn't have to be crucified. He gave you the dance inside of it. My God, why are we ashamed to dance in the house of God? Why? 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 Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something very important that Jesus said at the time of his triumphant entry into Jerusalem that had been prophesied by many years from the prophets of old. In Luke 19 and 37, when he was come near, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples, they began to rejoice. And praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. 
And they were saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitudes, they said, Master, will you shut them up? Will you silence them? And he said, I'm going to tell you something. If they hold their peace, the stones are going to replace them. If they stop shouting, if they stop crying out with everything that is within them, if they silence that worship, if they will not be the lively worship people, if they will not receive me, if they reject me, I will replace them. I will choose replacement. And Jesus, knowing their hearts, knew they were not going to receive him. Luke chapter 19, verse 40, and he answered, he said unto them, I tell you, if they hold their peace, the stones are going to immediately cry out. It's going to take their place. And when he was come near, he beheld the city. Jesus didn't have a dancing party. He started weeping. He said, if you had known, at least in this day, the things that belong to you and your peace, but your, your eyes, you're hid. And for the days will come, your enemies are going to cast a trench around you and compass around you and keep you on every side. And they're going to lay thee even unto the ground and your children with you. And they will not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not. In other words, you did not welcome me. And this is the part that's so hard for us. But we just can't quite wrap our minds around it. Within a matter of days, the Jews went from waving palms and dancing and shouting and welcoming and praising him to rejecting him and commanding the Romans crucify. Hello. Come on, somebody. I've come with a message from the Lord. You are the Lord's chosen replacements. I'm going to say it again. You are the Lord's chosen replacements. He came to his own. He came to the Jews and his own rejected him. And now the Lord has chosen you. John said it like this, John 1 and 10. He was in the world. The world was made by him. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whew. You, you said the world was made by him. No, that was Jesus. What about God? <laughs> <laughs> he came to his own and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came to his own his own received him not but as many that would to them gave power to become the sons of God 
to them that believe on his name. We're not just here to go through some tradition of religion. We are not here to go through some kind of a form. We are here because we have been chosen. We have been chosen to do what the Jews wouldn't do. Come on. Hello. Come on. They wouldn't. They wouldn't receive him. They wouldn't. Come on. You have been chosen to replace those that were silenced. God has chosen you. You need to get your palm of praise out. That don't mean you got to have one of these in your hand. You need to get your palm of praise out. (laughs) You need to open up your voice and you need to be willing to get loud. You need to be willing to shout. You need to be willing to dance. You need to be willing. Come on, somebody. Religion didn't save you. The blood of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus, and the infilling power of his spirit that comes into your life, that's what will save you. You are God's chosen replacements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This church has come a long way in the years since we started it uh, over 20 years ago. But I'm ready for it to go to another level of wildness. Uh, come on. Uh, I'm ready for it to move in to another dimension uh, where the people know those people, they get crazy when it comes to welcoming the Lord of Lords. We have chosen replacements. Peter, man with the keys to the kingdom, the one that all the other 11 was with when he would preach in the book of Acts, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and receive the Holy Ghost. You've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. The one that would preach... 1 Peter 2 and 5, here's what it said to the people that received the Holy Ghost, that were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that repented of their sins and welcomed the king in. Listen, you as lively stones he said, I'm going to get stones out. Hello? (laughs) You, as lively stones, living stones, you are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. Come on. Come on, somebody, that are acceptable unto God when God's coming by. Are you saying, King of glory, come in, come in. King of glory, come in, come in. Fill me, fill me with your spirit. Lively stones, the chosen replacements. And this here is is one of the most encouraging scriptures unto the people of the New Testament that have received him and been born again of water and spirit, filled with overcoming power. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, you are a chosen generation. 
Sister Gwen, you just texted that to me, didn't you? <laughs> I love Sister Gwen. She's an encourager. Wednesday night, it wasn't long. Here come a text, man. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Chosen! Chosen! Come on, you have been adopted. I preached about it. If you didn't watch Wednesday night, go back and watch it. You, there's been an adoption. At one time, you were not the people of God. But now, he said, I need replacements. You're going to be the replacements. Oh, 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 my God of glory. My God of glory. My God of heaven. You are a chosen generation. He is repeating everything that the word of God throughout the years had said about the Jews. They're the chosen. But now Peter's saying, you are the chosen. You are the royal priesthood. You are the holy nation. Come on. Everything that was connected to Israel, Jews, Jerusalem. He says, now, it's you. You are that holy nation. You are that chosen priesthood. You are that chosen generation. You are that peculiar people. That, that people that is set outside, that is chosen by God. Come on, somebody. Please get what I'm preaching this morning. You are the chosen generation. You are the chosen royal priesthood. You are the chosen. You, he called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Acts chapter 15, verse 14, Simeon he had declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles. And they're connected now. In the book of Acts, they're connected. When the people, when they seen the Gentiles receiving the Holy Ghost, the only way they knew that was happening, you read the scripture, when they heard them speaking in tongues, they said, my God, he has opened the kingdom unto the Gentiles. Oh, you don't have to speak in tongues. That's what they try to tell you. You need to look them in the eye and say that's the only way they knew that the kingdom was opened unto the Gentiles was when they began to speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Don't go by that stuff. Well, there's many ways to heaven. We're all going to get there. There's not. That's, that is not the Bible. There's only one way. And there's only one name under heaven whereby you shall be saved. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. His name is Jesus. They said, oh, wait a minute. They said, oh, the, the, the Gentiles. We, we remember the Gentiles. He was going to reach to them and take out of them a people for his name. And to this agrees the words of the prophets where it is written, after this I'm gonna return and build again the tabernacle of David. You gotta come back tonight. After this I'm gonna come, I'm gonna rebuild the tabernacle of David. Which was falling down. And I'm going to build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up and the residue of men will seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called said the Lord who does all these things. Just a sneak preview for tonight. It's those lively Gentiles. Those lively Gentiles. He said, I've called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. 
You were once not a people, but now you are. And I've called you out for one reason, to show praises. Jesus! Yeah. 
there anybody else in this room? You don't mind stepping out? Is there anybody that's never received the Holy Ghost like I'm preaching about today? And you've never spoke in tongues like the Bible says you will? I'm telling you it is real. All you have to do is repent of your sins. He just said, I can't come into an unclean tabernacle. But when you repent, he's going to forgive you. If you're not playing games with him, he's going to forgive you. And then all you got to say is, come in, King of glory. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, maybe you don't remember or maybe they did titles. I'm preaching to you a message the devil don't want you to hear. You've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. Now you can be baptized before you receive the Holy Ghost or you can be baptized after you receive the Holy Ghost. We have examples of both in the Bible. But you got to repent, though. And then just welcome the Lord. Don't worry about what it looks like. We're not trying to teach you something. I'm not going to say you tie my tie, my tie and I tie your tie, and we're going to ride a Kawasaki and jump on a Honda. I'm not going to teach you nothing but to repent and call upon the name of Jesus. He's the Lord of glory. He's the Lord of glory. He wants to fill you with salvation today that you go into heaven with him. And you're going to be one of those on a white horse behind him when he comes back and tells the world you're through with your party. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, a lot of people don't understand what I'm preaching. But I'm going to tell you right now, those of you that are ready when the rapture, when the Lord calls the church out of here in a twinkling of an eye, it's going to happen. Meaning, it's, you, you blink your eye, it's done. It's that quick. It's, it's just going to be out of here. And then there's the second coming. The second coming is where Jesus comes down and touches the earth for the second time. You're coming back with him at that time. You're white and clean and you're on one of those white horses. And for 1,000 years, we will rule and reign with Christ Jesus on this earth. Come on, somebody. You, I'm telling you, friend, it is almost here. It is almost here. It is almost here. The Lord is about to get his church, his people, his chosen out of here and let the Antichrist have it for a while. Are you afraid of the Antichrist? No, I'm not. He has given me authority and power. He said, when I pray, I can bind the devils and I have authority to cast them out. The Antichrist does not have the authority yet because you are the body of Christ and you're still here right now. He wants it. The Antichrist wants it. He wants to reign. But the body is in the way. You have power when you pray. You've got power over demons and devils. You need to show the world you are the chosen. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.